Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the talk. I'm Krishna Gade. I'm the founder CEO of Fiddler AI. I uh, hope you're having an en enjoyable conference. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about uh, generative AI and how uh, it needs to meet with responsible AI and uh, you know, some of the risks around generative AI, how you know, companies across the board are trying to solve for it, and what are the problems that we need to think about. So you know, I don't have to tell you that right, this entire conference has been about AI in some form or the other. Uh, we are in the midst of this amazing transformation, and I've lived through a couple of ones already in the last 20 years. The dot-com transformation, the cloud transformation, the mobile transformation. Now it seems like we are in the midst of this AI transformation where pretty much every application that we consume, whether it's a consumer-facing application or an enterprise application, will be an AI-based application in the coming years. Now, the whole point of generative AI has been that, you know, with the help of these large language models, now enterprises can get started very quickly. You know, we are seeing this tremendous potential to vastly improve our business you know, across the board, whether that's financial services, healthcare, pharma, retail, you know, you're seeing an, an opportunity to have a you know, $4 trillion impact on, in, a, in an economy in, in the coming years. Now, it's a huge, huge opportunity for everybody, and we're seeing across the board, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, banking industry where, you know, people are thinking about uh, summarization of legal documents or creating reports very easily, you know, customer service, you know, chatbots that can help customers, you know, handle questions very quickly or internal documentation tools. So, you know, across the board, we are seeing use cases from retail and CPG where, you know, we are working with, you know, large e-commerce companies that are trying to create curated shopping experience where you no longer go to a website and see a list of recommendations and you go to, let's say you go to an Airbnb, you might want to chat uh, with the chatbot saying that, hey, where is my next, you know, uh, uh, next big destination? You know, how do I find the next big place? Or you go to an Amazon, you might be, you might be interacting with, a, with, a, with an assistant to, you know, do your shopping experience, right? So these are, you know, things across the board that uh, we are seeing, you know, whether that's pharma or retail. Now, the question is, like, is all, all of this hunky-dory, right? Like, you know, are there things that we need to be worried about? You know, the previous speaker alluded to this a little bit. You know, the fundamentally, uh, AI is a black box for a lot of us as humans. It's this magical software that can take some data and spit out some predictions or generate some content but we really don't know how it works behind the scenes. And even before generative AI, we have seen numerous cases where AI has gone wrong and bitten us badly. You know, this has happened in you know, various different industries, especially in the financial services industries, we have seen where AI going wrong, whether it's you know, biased pricing algorithms or you know, fraud, uh, fraud, monitor, fraud detection techniques going wrong, or you know, without proper monitoring and and explainability and, and, and understanding of AI, we have seen these costly AI disasters. And these can be both disasters that can hurt companies in terms of you know, business risk, where you know, millions of dollars have been lost, or a lot of reputation damage, you know, whether you know, it's a you know, self-driving car accident, or you know, uh, you know, a, a credit card algorithm biasing against women, or you know, a company sort of losing business value because of Oh, you know, overpricing uh, homes that they, that they purchased. So the, this is the reason why, you know, we are seeing that, you know, across the world, you know, there is this, uh, you know, emphasis on, you know, institutionalizing certain regulations, right, to make sure that AI can be done right. Uh, obviously, there is a, you know, there's a trade-off here. You know, if you too regulate it too fast, then you would curb, the, you know, development. So we are in this midst of this, uh, you know, uh, a place where, you know, how quickly do you want to adopt AI and how safe you want to deploy it. And so this is, this is kind of the trade-off where, you know, a tr strategy around, you know, building responsible AI can be very, very helpful from an enterprise perspective, right? So why is this important? You know, from a ground level, right, when you have an AI application, you know, when you productionize it, you know, it can have, it can carry various different risks. Because fundamentally, like, unlike traditional software, AI is different, right? It's not a deterministic software. You know, it's, 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 if you train an AI model, it's not supposed to work the same way a few months later or, you know, even a few weeks later. You know, because the performance can vary, performance can change. 
And so this, this, this notion of you know, you know, having this drift in you know, performance, being able this variability in terms of how it predicts can actually you know, cause a lot of risks. You know, these are some things that you know, we, I can talk about. You know, when you actually productionize an AI application, when it makes a response, when it creates a response or when it makes a prediction, how did it come up with that prediction? There's a big transparency issue there. You know, whether, it's, whether the model is being biased against a certain demographic, we don't know, right? You know, whether it's changing its performance across versions, whether it's leaking PII data to our users, whether it's actually saving, send, sending some unsafe responses, you know, how sensitive it is to different prompts. You know, for example, if you have played with ChatGPT, if you slightly change the, the question a little bit, you might get a very different response. So how can we make sure, you know, there's tremendous technology out there, how can we safely operationalize it? How can we, how can we take all of these risks and absorb all these risks so that we can, you know, deploy AI in a responsible manner? And that's the question that we want to answer. So here are some, you know, more, uh, you know, risks that, you know, if you go into the details, right? So, for example, you know, generative AI, unlike traditional AI, can carry a tremendous amount of, pri you know, privacy risk. And it's known that now these large language models can memorize training data instances. So you can actually, you, with prompt injection attacks, you know, you are, you know either you, your customers or hackers can actually extract out the training data that you are supplying for these large language models. This is an example where you know, I can train a large language model with a, with a bunch of Netflix movie titles. I can extract out you know, uh, the exact image of the person by you know, supplying the prompt uh, in, in an appropriate manner. And similarly, hallucinations are, are this, this huge, uh, you know, problem with generative AI, you know, you know, because these are just like, you know, number crunching machines, right? It's predicting the next word, next sentence, and, and it can make up things it, because it's scouring the entire internet to come up with these paragraphs in, of generation. So here is a case where a very well-known computer science researcher uh, was pronounced dead by ChatGPT, and when this person was trying to you know, ask and you know, interrogate this, the, 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 the open AI to sort of what's going on here. Obviously, uh, it could not come up with a valid evidence of why, why it actually found out, you know, came, came up with this generation. So this is a huge problem. Imagine if you're developing a customer-facing chatbot and it's gonna lie about the mortgage rate or it's gonna you know, you know, provide like an incorrect estimate for a, pricing, uh, for a price that, of an item. So these are huge problems for, for companies to think about. And then there's this, this notion of you know, transparency, right? Uh, so generative AI can self-explain itself, but interestingly enough, uh, the self-explanations can vary based on the context. So here is a question where, you know, is the following sentence plausible? Wayne Rooney shot from the outside of the 18. You know, depending on the context that you supply, the LLMs can actually come up with a completely different explanation between a thought, for, you know, whether it's a football question or a soccer-related question question. So you cannot really depend on these, you know, uh, LLMs, you know, coming up with their own generations and explanations all the time. And finally, you know, elephant in the room is bias, right? These large language models are built on World Wide Web. And World Wide Web is, as we know, is authored by the privileged class in the world. And you know, the people who could speak English, who had access to internet, have been, or have been authoring most of these documents. Now, there is bias built into these LLMs by default. Now, if you ask a question like, you know, two Muslims walked into a room, you know, it's basically the LLMs can answer with this Texas cartoon contest and, and, the, and, the, and the fire fire accident that happened. So these these algorithms, you know, have these you know bias baked into them. The models have bias baked uh, big bias baked into them, and so there's a, there's a very very important aspect of you know understanding and knowing whether how the data uh, is influencing the bias, you know, how, what are the outcomes that these models are models are emanating. So, so, so how do we deal with this? Now, on one side, enterprises have this pressure. Every chief data officer, chief analytics officer, heads of AI that we speak to have the pressure coming from the top down to implement AI as fast as possible, where at the same time, you know, they have, they have, to, they have to basically you know, cater to these risks, and because at the end of the day, you know, if AI goes wrong, you know, their heads will roll, right? So how do we think, how do they, how do we think about you know, responsible AI here. So this is basically what we have been working at Fiddler. You know, we believe that AI observability is a great way to institutionalize responsible AI in an organization. Now, we have seen innovation happen in the last few, few years, you know, around 
you know, various different modeling, you know, techniques, you know, lots of data platforms, right? So we have maturity in the data warehouses, lake houses, and we have maturity now in lots of choices around, you know, pre-trained large language models or platforms that can help us create these models. But what is preventing us to operationalize these models is this lack of transparency. How is the model working? Why did it predict what it did? You know, can I make sure that, uh, have, do I have an overview of uh, how all the models that my business is, is running, you know, do I have like governance around them? So this is basically what, you know, you know we believe is the missing link uh, in terms of operationalizing generative AI in, in a responsible manner. And so what does, how does it help us? Now, how does it, how, how will it actually help, you know, enterprise companies? You know, AI observability by fundamentally monitoring your AI outcomes, by monitoring your prompts and responses, by knowing how your AI is actually making predictions, you can, you can actually make sure that your models are working for you, not against you, right? Your, your models are working for your end users and, and, and protecting the company's brand and, and reputation and, and not creating much business risk. At the same time, you know, this is a great opportunity for all of us because we are, in, we are basically leading this AI transformation for the society, right? We owe it to the society to actually produce, um, you know, responsible AI products, you know, where it can actually lead to fair and responsible outcomes for the entire society. And so it's a, it's a great opportunity to think about it, responsible AI, as you think about AI strategy in your, in your companies. So here's a little bit about what Fiddler does. It's a full stack AI observability platform you know, we started with, with the mission to build trust into AI many years ago, pre-generative AI. So we, we've been working with you know, lots of you know, customers that employ predictive ML, you know, your traditional you know, customer acquisition models, fraud detection models, you know, churn prediction models, credit scoring models. Uh, but now with the large language models, we're, the platform is extended to cater towards you know, monitoring performance of these large language models, ROI of it, and ensuring that these LLMs are explainable, you know, there's data privacy checks happening. So the, the goal of the platform is to create an experience where it can cater to, you know, your data scientists, ML engineers, but also your business leaders and, and your compliance leaders. Uh, you, know, your, you know, the way we sort of build the product is basically your data scientists and ML engineers can integrate a variety of these, your ML models. To, to the platform and create this cockpit view experience where they can track all of their model performance in one place, set up alerts and root cause, do root cause analysis when things fail. And also create explanations of how the models are arriving at those outcomes and, and share it with different stakeholders. Because we can, that's how we can truly democratize AI, right? Because there's a big gulf of, in terms of you know, understanding of AI, you know, oftentimes, you know, I was a data scientist and ML engineer at Facebook before, and every, any time, you know, you know, business people or product people would ask me questions of, oh, why did the new suite algorithm show this new story, or, you know, why was this coming up? So we would shrug shoulders, you know, we don't know, it's just the model, right? So, so there's a big gulf of gap between the practitioner and the, and the business person, and the Fiddler attempts to close that gap. By, you know, by bringing a culture of trust in the company, so that empowering the ML engineers and data scientists to spread these insights across the organization. And we believe this is the first step towards addressing all of the responsible AI challenges. And so if you have questions, you know, I'm happy to take, you know, we have a booth uh, in nearby, you know, we have a live demo for you to watch out for and, and sort of, uh, you know, like discover more. But we, we are very, very, very excited about this space. We believe that, with, with, with sort of uh, uh, with, with AI now, uh, you know, with pre-trained models and large language models, we're, you know, we're, we've come to a stage where every enterprise can adopt it. But now the question is, you know, whether we all can adopt it in a safe and responsible manner, or we don't, right? So it's a choice one needs to make, and we are to help. We are here to help. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.